everybody, I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com and despite the fact that we have had some incredibly wet weather this week and my beloved craft room flooded, we're going to talk about that later, but we're going to dive into Amigurumi Mistakes Part 2. We're going to talk about the fascinating topics like tension, yarn weights, color choices, and seaming. So if you missed Amigurumi, I am, she is completely dry <laughs> Ami Gurumi, Ami Gurumi. If you missed Ami Gurumi Mistakes Part 1, try saying that three times fast. We talked all about the importance of focusing on the face, like embroidery and symmetry. We talked about the importance of counting your stitches, and we also talked about stuffing and the difference it makes when you are crocheting or knitting toys. We are going to dive right into the topic of tension. I truly believe that most stuffing errors really have to do with your tension. When you are crocheting and knitting toys, you should not see stuff poking through your stitches. So for crochet toys, you may have one of two issues. You may be too loose. You may not be crocheting tight enough. So really tighten up your tension and see if that helps the issue. The other issue could be that you're using a hook that's just a little bit too big for your yarn. Look at your pattern. Most patterns are pretty good about listing what hook you should use for the type of yarn that you're going to be using. Now, if you still find that your stitches are a little bit too loose or you're seeing the stuffing coming through, then you know what? Go down a hook size. That is a really great way to immediately tighten up those stitches or go up in a weight of your yarn. So if you have a big yarn stash, you could just say, okay, it was a DK. Well, I'm going to try my worsted weight now. Use those different tools that you have at your disposal to make sure that your tension is really, really good. When it comes to Ami Gurumi mistakes, yarn matters, but maybe not as much as you think it does. If you are using a yarn weight that is comparable to what the pattern designer is recommending, you're already off to a really, really good start. My goal is to always use up what I already have. I am in a big stash busting mode right now. And if you're like me, you've already got a lot of yarn sitting around in your craft room or in your house or in your closet or stuffed under the bed. You know what I'm talking about. So using what you have is generally, in my opinion, the best thing you can do. Now I'm going to give you some of my suggestions just because, hey, I'm here. You may need to buy some yarn and I'm going to tell you what I love. I'm going to share some of my favorite yarns with you, but I also thought it might be helpful to see what they look like actually made up in those yarns. I have my Barocco Vintage here, and Mr. Wolfgang here was made with a Barocco Vintage, and if you can tell with that gray color, it's a really heathered color. I love these colors so very much. Also, the little rhino back here, she was crocheted with a Barocco Vintage as well, so they're not all heathered. Some of them are a solid color. Now, my Miss Piggy here, her body body was knitted with the paint box wool mix Erin. So you can see that she is a solid little pink color. Now her clothing is made with the Debbie Bliss Baby Cash Merino, which is a sport weight actually. But now getting to little Peppin Puffin right here, he is actually crocheted with the paint box cotton DK. So it's an actually a completely different weight. It's a DK weight. Also this little granny square blanket in the background here, if you can sort of see it, that that was also crocheted with the paint box cotton DK as well. The colors are absolutely stunning. They are so gorgeous. That is such an affordable yarn. I don't use it anymore and I talked about this before because of my tendonitis. Cotton does not work well with that. I'm going to do a video. I keep saying I'm going to do a video but I am going to do a video all about that in the very near future. But those are really my recommendations and hopefully you can kind of get an idea with these little examples how they actually look made up. One of my favorite parts of any Amigurumi project is choosing the yarn colors. This is my favorite part. I love trying new combinations and trying new colors and putting them all together. It really is my favorite part. I've got a little trick up my sleeve and that is Pinterest. Say for example, I need the color pink and I need to find some other colors that I want to use with this. I will go to Pinterest and I will put up in that search bar pink color palette. All of these beautiful colors and color 
color combinations are going to appear on my screen and it is absolute joy when you see this happen. Already, experts have put color palettes together. They're in the wedding and the home decor and the floral industries and they have put these beautiful color combinations already on Pinterest just for us. So I use that as a resource all of the time and sometimes you are going to find color combinations that you would not have naturally thought of before. The other great thing is if, say this is a vintage pink color, I can put in the search bar vintage pink color palette and it will bring all of these color palettes up, get even more and more specific. I also will add terms in there like fall or winter or neutrals or things like that that get even more specific with what I am looking for. It is a fabulous resource. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room and that is seaming. I've never met anyone in real life or online who likes to sew on the amigurumi body parts. Now this isn't an elephant, but it is a rhinoceros from the wonderful pattern book, Animal Friends of Peekapow. I will leave a link for that in the description box below. And there's a lot to seam on this little guy. There's ears, cheeks, the little horns here, the arms. There was a lot going on with this, but I have two great resources for you. So this is crocheted and I actually have my video Amigurumi 101 part four, and I will leave a link for that in the description box below because I take you through exactly how to seam, how to sew on different parts. I did that with the otter from this same book. But also if you are a knitter, I have a fabulous tutorial from Knit Curl Hunter on the mattress stitch. Now my friend Katie sent that to me and I really think that this is one of the best video tutorials for how to do the mattress stitch because that is, I know, I know it's tricky. I know, trust me. It's one of those things that it takes practice and but if you can wrap your brain around how to do the mattress stitch, especially when it comes to knitted toys, it is going to, it's a game changer. It really, really helps your toys go to that next level and just look really professional and look so, so beautiful. So now let's talk about my flooded basement. I'm gonna take you on a little tour. This was two days afterwards. It still was pretty bad and you will hear in my voice the disappointment, the frustration, and the exhaustion, but there's good news in the end and I will meet you back after you watch that little part. You remember a few weeks ago when I showed you my beautiful craft room and how gorgeous it was? Well, it doesn't look like that anymore. It is an absolute disaster again. We had really bad weather here a couple of days ago and I still have water on the floor. My my garage is completely destroyed. I'll show you that as well. We had major, major flooding in here. So this is two days later. So we're still working on it, still working on it. Good thing is I have two different companies coming. One, Olive, you come out of here. Come on, baby. We have one coming on Monday and one coming on Tuesday to give us estimates and we are getting this fixed. This is never ever gonna happen again. So I'm out walking Jersey Boy and Olive, but I wanted to update you. So my basement is completely dry now, which is really great. I was able to film in there as you saw, but I've had now three different people come out and give me estimates for what the work is going to entail and how much it's going to cost. Good news is it's a fairly simple job. I've got a couple more people that I'm actually going to call about it. They both agreed on how to fix the problem, how to permanently fix it. And they both said that it wasn't a big job to do, that it would only take a couple of days. And for that, I was really thrilled. The only negative thing is that they both said because we had such big storms, so many people were affected that it's going to be four to five weeks before they get out to us. I will keep you guys informed of all the progress, everything that happens. I really appreciate all the messages, everything you guys have sent me. It really wasn't a big deal, but you know, I got my panties all in a wad about it and I was not thrilled, but it's going to get fixed. And for that, I am so happy. I also wanted to update you guys about a new book that I'm reading. I'm actually listening listening to it. It's through our library's free service, but it is by Leanne Moriarty. It's a hard name to say, but it's Nine Perfect Strangers. I don't know if you've ever read any of her books. She's an Australian author. It is the lady that wrote Big Little Lies. So if you know that book, that was such an amazing book. So Nine Perfect Strangers, so good. I'm already like wanting to listen to it every minute I get a chance. I'm going to turn it back on and finish walking Jersey Boy and Olive. And I, I hope you guys like that, but let me know if you've read any of her books or give me your book recommendations. I love finding new books, especially if they are audio books, because you know what? I love to do two things at one time and you can crochet and knit while you're listening to a fantastic story. I'm 
on my way to go pick up my son from community college. He is our third born out of four. The reason why he is not driving is because Jackson has epilepsy. And I've talked about this before. Some of you have heard this many, many times. I just thought I wanted to share a little bit more about it. Now, here's the deal. If he gives me permission to share this, I will be putting this on YouTube channel. If he doesn't give me permission, then I'm not going to share this and you'll never see this. I'm going to pick him up right now. One of the things that I hear a lot from people are, oh, well, eventually maybe he'll be able to drive. You know, I had a cousin who had epilepsy who outgrew it. Jackson's case is different from a lot of people who have epilepsy because we do know the reason why he has seizures. Jackson, when he was born, had a stroke. He has cerebral palsy. It basically caused damage to 40% of his brain. That is the part that is causing the abnormal electrical activities in his brain. Before you say, oh, I'm so sorry, please don't, because he is a brilliant kid. He is so smart. He is my best arguer of all of my kids. He loves politics. He loves environmental things. He is a delight. He is such a wonderful young man. I tell you what, he is just a blessing all the way around. So please don't be sorry. He has weathered the, the things that he has to overcome better than most people I know who have all kinds of different things. We all have things that we have to overcome. It's just happened to be in the physical department. He does have to take a lot of medication. He's actually on four different meds for his epilepsy. That does cause, it makes him really tired to be honest because these medications are meant to kind of dull the brain down, cause those electrical activities not to be firing off all the time. And unfortunately his still do. He still has small seizures pretty much every day and they don't really affect him too much unless he has quite a few of those. He also has a vagus nerve stimulator that's implanted in his chest wired go up into his vagus nerve in his neck and send electrical impulses up into the brain. That's a really cool device and we're able to download all of the data from it because it will send additional impulses up into the brain if it detects a seizure coming on by his heart rate increasing. Unfortunately, it's happening all the time, especially overnight. Jackson definitely has a very difficult to treat case and he goes to community college part-time just because all the meds and everything else, it, it really does, does get worn out a little bit easier than somebody who wasn't on all those medications and I'm telling you right now if I had to take the amount of medication that he has to I probably would I probably wouldn't get out of bed he really is an amazing young man but you know these times of driving back and forth to get him from school actually is I don't know I've missed it because my other three kids all drive two of them have already moved out of the house to me this is just a really nice time it's really that one-on-one -on -one time when you get to spend just together nobody else so I really don't mind driving to go get him. We always have excellent conversations. He is a criminal justice major. He's always coming home and one of his classes this semester is criminology. He's learning all these really cool things. That's really fun. I just wanna say thank you so much for stopping by the Lip Petite Saint Crochet YouTube channel today. I really appreciate every single one of you. There are quite a few new subscribers. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a little thumbs up. That would be so amazing. I'm gonna leave a couple of videos for for you so that you can see especially my before my craft room flooded my beautiful reveal i'm gonna leave my amigurumi 101 playlist for you i will see you guys in the next video